Hi there. Um, in this video, we're going to be talking about topic 4.6 of the AP Chemistry Curriculum, Introduction to Titration. Um, and this particular video is a little strange in that it uh, is just an introduction to titration. It's not all the details of titration. You'll get into those when you start talking about uh, redox reactions and acid-base reactions. So we're basically just going to introduce some vocabulary here as well as uh, basic techniques. So I've um, given you a diagram over here of titration, and you'll see all the different labels on our setup. Um, your burette is where you, dis uh, you dispense your titrant from. The titrant is the substance typically that you know the concentration of. So we know the concentration of our titrant, which is up here. It's used to dispense into what's called the analyte. And the analyte is the substance that you don't know something about, either concentra typically concentration. So we use something we do know the concentration of to determine the concentration of something we don't know the concentration of. The titrant is what you do know the concentration of. The analyte is what you don't know the concentration of. So we distribute that from the burette using a uh, valve that's called a stopcock. Uh, that valve turns and allows you to dispense very uh, specific amounts of titrant into the analyte. Uh, typically, we do this into an Erlenmeyer flask, uh, which allows for swirling. Or if you're not swirling, if you have a magnetic stir, the magnetic stir allows you to uh, swirl the titrant and analyte together so that the chemical reaction can take place evenly and uniformly. Uh, until you reach um, the end point of the titration, which we'll talk about in just a second. So let's say that you're doing a neutralization reaction between HCl and NaOH. This is probably your first titration you've ever done was HCl and NaOH. Um, and when these two substances react with one another, they make water and sodium fluoride. Uh, and as this reaction occurs, we're adding uh, either known HCl to unknown NaOH or not known NaOH to unknown HCl. Um, and so if we're trying to figure out the concentration of an NaOH solution, we would typically know how much NaOH solution we have, let's say 10 milliliters. And we start adding uh, from zero milliliters of HCl, we start adding the HCl into the NaOH and start neutralizing that 10 milliliters until we get to the point where the amount, the moles of HCl, is equivalent to the moles of NaOH. So let's say that we had three NaOH molecules. Actually, let's do four NaOH molecules. And they're not molecules, they're formula units because it's an ionic compound. If we add to that one molecule of HCl, then of course this HCl molecule can neutralize the NaOH uh, and they're neutralized from one another. But we still have NaOH present, so we would still have to add more HCl to neutralize more NaOH. So now if we add another molecule of HCl, we neutralize the NaOH and that neutralizes, uh, but we still have NaOH present. So we keep adding HCl until all the NaOH is neutralized. And at that point, we've reached the equivalence point. The equivalence point is the point at which the number of moles of the acid are equal to the number of moles of the base. They're equivalent to one another, stoichiometrically. Notice it's a one-to-one -one ratio in our uh, chemical reaction. So it's a one-to-one -one ratio to get to the equivalence point. At this point, we would have a color change in the analyte because we would have added a indicator that changes colors once we reach that, uh, the point where um, the moles of acid equals the moles of base for this particular reaction. So the end point is when the color change occurs in your titration. It doesn't necessarily have to be at the equivalence point. It just depends on what uh, what you're trying to solve for. But the end point is where you have a color change. The equivalence point is where you have a stoichiometric equivalent amount of acid and base in your reaction. Let me show you how the equivalence point doesn't have to be one to one. Let's say that we had HCl and we were neutralizing uh, barium hydroxide, BaOH2. 
Um, that would make water, HOH, and barium chloride, BaCl2. If you look here, for every one mole of barium hydroxide that needs to be neutralized, you would need two moles of HCl. So in this case, let's say that we had, like in the last discussion, we had four BaOHs, BaOH2s, and to that we started adding HCl. So let's say we added one HCl molecule to this solution that had four BaOH2s. One HCl is not going to neutralize a whole BaOH2 because there's two OHs. We need two HCls. So when we add two HCls, that would neutralize one BaOH2, barium hydroxide uh, formula unit. When we add another two HCls, that would neutralize another BaOH2 uh, formula unit. Notice we've reached the half equivalence point at this point. We've neutralized half of the BaOH2s, but it took four HCLs to neutralize those two BaOH2s. So this is the half equivalence point, but notice that it's not as, it's stoichiometrically, it's a two to one ratio. We still have to add four more HCLs, oops, HCLs, in order to neutralize, whoa, what went on? To neutralize, <laughs> to neutralize those two BaOH2s. So two HCLs neutralize that, two HCLs neutralize that, and now we've reached the equivalence point. Notice the equivalence point doesn't mean equal moles, it means stoichiometric equivalent amounts of HCl and BaOH2. So I have twice as much HCl as BaOH2. What the titration allows me to do is find the point experimentally where the amount of HCl that I've added is stoichiometrically equivalent to the amount of uh, analyte that I'm trying to analyze. And so the equivalence point is where they're stoichiometrically uh, equivalent to one another. The end point is where the color change occurs. And again, the point of the uh, titration is to use something you know the concentration of to determine the concentration of something you don't know the concentration of. So again, this was just an introduction to titration. We're not going to go into all the calculations here because those calculations are done in other topics. If you do have any questions about what titration is um, or what the equipment uh, is or how it's used, uh, please feel free to talk to me. I'd be happy to help you out. Good luck.